Well, hello there and good evening to each and every one of you. We praise God for you. May the Lord bless you. I pray you've had a great day and we've been expecting uh, you on tonight and uh, we're grateful to have this opportunity to speak into your life. Welcome to uh, our midweek fellowship here at the Energy Center in the city of Elkridge, Maryland. I believe the glory of the Lord is settling here like we've never known before. Listen, we're going to begin tonight, uh, I think, a very intriguing study. And it's going to look a little different over these next couple of weeks because I just want to come right into your home. I want to come right into your car. I want to come uh, to that desk. You're working that third shift. And uh, I want to get right into that opportunity that you've provided God to be able to speak to you. I firmly believe that uh, in our engagement through this journey that we're going to go uh, on together, not just with our local church, but for those of you that are uh, in covenant with me, I uh, have had the uh, opportunity and the honor of being spiritual father or mentor or an influencer, whatever role I play. Uh, I believe that something changes in our discussion uh, because we're not raising up church people. This time of engagement is not to uh, bring excitement to the fact that you just become emotional. I really want to take this time to find out what it is from the scientific perspective, from the passionate perspective, what is it that God longs for from us. I firmly believe that uh, how he engages in conversation with us has changed. How he engages in relationship, the rules of engagement, they've changed. How he speaks to us. And then secondly, and probably most importantly, how he allows us to speak or to engage with him. Something has shifted. Something has changed. Uh, even as we are uh, in the midst of uh, what looks to be war and rumors of war there in uh, uh, Russia, there in uh, Belarus, and throughout the United Kingdom, things are happening, things are shifting in Poland. I mean, even as we speak tonight. And as I was sharing on Sunday morning, that... Uh, the rules of engagement of war has changed. Uh, the uh, accord uh, that was written and established in Geneva many years ago says that according to the Geneva writ that uh, when certain things happen that it was only supposed to happen within the governance of the establishment of the rules that were set. Number one, you can't blow up a hospital, you can't blow up a nursery, uh, you can't uh, go in beyond certain things. From a military perspective, that's one thing, but to go in and do things outside of that agreement uh, causes you to be a war criminal. We're seeing that right before our eyes. Well, as it is in the natural, it's already in the spirit. So I want you to follow me tonight because uh, we're going to learn some things together, but number one rule is, as it is in the spirit, so it is in the natural. We just get a visual of what has already happened in the spirit realm by seeing activity in the natural realm. I don't want you to forget that. Things do not happen in the natural first. They have already happened in the spirit realm. So let's make this uh, known tonight that all truth is parallel. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity with you. And listen, I need you to do something. I need you to let me know. It's important tonight that I know where you are listening to us from, the city or the state, the country, because we want to make sure that we are adjusting some things uh, in your behalf. And so no matter where you are, whether you are a member of our local assembly or you are a new member of our online family, I want to welcome you and thank you for being a part of our online family 
here at the Energy Center. You are as important online as those that are here in the natural. I want to thank you for making this to be the place you call safe, to be the place where you hang out and begin to find the more of God. I, as your leader, am after God like a bloodhound. So uh, we're appreciative. Let me know. Let me know. Get something to write with. Get something to write upon. Many of you, it's just blown my mind that many of you have already purchased the book, The God Chaser, uh, that Tommy Tenney wrote. Um, I don't get any proceeds from it. I just believe that we have to have a measuring stick of where things happen in times past. What happened with revival? How did revivals begin? What preceded revival? Uh, what caused it to stop? And what caused it to be lengthened? Uh, in 1906, there was a major shift in the spirit realm that hit the natural, and it's called the Azusa Street. For 1,000 days and nights, the move of God just permeated Los Angeles, and it affected things and still affecting things in our lifetime today from 1906 until now, I believe that we are ripe for another move of God. I won't say another Azusa Street, but something like unto it where the glory of God just did something so awesome. Well, we're going to talk about what brought that on. Did God just show up arbitrarily or was he a part of what was happening or was he partnering with us? Well, I want you to write these words down, hunger and thirst, hunger and thirst. It is important for you to understand that hunger and thirst provokes God. I, I almost get in tears sometime about how hungry, how desperate I personally am to see a move of God in my lifetime. I've said over the years that, that if I'm not a part of, I don't have to be one of the speakers on the stages, but uh, if I'm not a part of even the administration of a move of God, I don't believe that my life or living uh, was uh, in the place that it should be. I don't want my life to have been in vain. I want to make sure, I want you and I to be a part of the group that is saying, Hunger and thirst is going to be what we're going to reveal. And we, we don't just want revival. We want an absolute move of God that is consistent with his attributes, consistent with how he does the things uh, that he does. So please, like and share, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, uh, share it with people around this world. Let them know that we're going on a deep dive study. Uh, and our next time we're gathering, we're going to have people on Zoom. We're going to have people in the sanctuary and those on stage to just interact, just to find out, are you as hungry as we are? And if you are hungry, I want you to just type that in just so I could see it. I'm seeing things even as you, you are typing it in because I want to engage with you tonight. And listen, while we're teaching, while we're sharing together, if you have a prayer request, I want you to type it in. I believe you can't talk about the Holy Spirit and what he does and who he is and then not give him time to manifest. This is, I believe, the right time, the time for God to show and reveal what he wants to do. I know we thought we knew him, but I believe we're about to find aspects and parts of God that we never thought existed. Let me read something to you. This is just from some of my notes that uh, my appreciation for the word of God has grown over the years. Its relevance and its insight. I appreciate the word of God because uh, it's hidden within. God gives insight to the process of relationship. God is about relationship. He's not about a weekend stay over. He wants relationship. He wants to be related to, connected to. He wants fellowship with his people. And so he desires to have a relationship with us. Some have never moved from their initial contact 
when uh, we were sinners. They gave their heart to the Lord, but they've never moved from that spot. They're just a sinner that's been saved or that gave their heart to God. Now, some have gone on uh, to be what we call Christians uh, or learning the Christ life. But I'm here to tell you that beginning today, we're going to begin to find out and experience that there is another level of relationship, and it's called sonship. Oh, yeah, he wants to have a relationship so that he calls us his own. This is the ultimate place of discovery that a believer can experience. And I want to stop right here and say, you can have this type of relationship on a daily basis with him. Now, I'm not just talking to people who are trying to get to know God. I'm not just talking to people who have dropped the ball. I'm talking to everybody because I believe that there is a hunger that's being stirred up in us around this world that we want to know God like we've never known him uh, in our entire life. Now, we've become turned off uh, by this old, antiquated, mythical Hollywood approach of how the scriptures are taught and preached especially as it relates to certain caricatures uh, in the scripture that we see that God simply reaches for ordinary people. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. A group of ordinary people can change a city. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go on and tell you, one man, one woman could change a city. One. You, one man can change a region because of the hunger and passion and the scripture says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, meaning after God or the way that God does things and his ability to do things, that they shall be filled. I decree and declare tonight that your hunger is about to pay off. Your thirst, although it may get you in a little bit of trouble with some of the people who want to be recreational Christians and they just want to come to church on Sunday and perform, but I'm talking about those of us, those of us that are saying, I want more of God. I want the more of him. I want to see him. I want to know him in his full manifested abilities. Now, uh, as we look on further in this, uh, he had a conversation with Jeremiah and he says, I didn't just decide to use you today. I did this even before you got here. While you were yet in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you before, and that's why you're mine now. Somebody needs to hear that. Because he knew you before you came into this world, before you came through your mother's womb, you were his. And that's why you are his now. He can claim ownership of you, and he's going to use you in this last day. Now, I firmly believe that we are in a section of time that we could call the last of the last of days. You could see things culminating. And I know that's a, a deep a scriptural theological stance that we're going to have to prove. But listen, hear me tonight. Things are happening around this world and nothing short of a move of God, nothing short of a revival of God's presence and a revival of our hunger for him is going to satisfy us. See, while you were trying to find yourself, while you were trying to change uh, the different kinds of people that you would hang around, he says, I waited for you. While you were trying to discover all your gifts and talents and skill sets, changing of jobs and majors in college, God is saying, I waited for you. I waited till you figured out whether or not you were going to be this and that, whether or not you were going to question uh, who you were and questioning uh, all the things that we see happening in the world today. He says, I waited because you are his. People seem to be drawn to what is fascinating and by this uh, mystical uh, image and the external attributes that somehow uh, have become the label or the optic of what we call Christianity. But I'm telling you, we're about to get exposed to the God of the scripture like we've never known before. Matter of fact, 
I've said it and I need to say it again tonight. I believe that God is coming to repossess his church. He's coming to get what belongs to him. And anything that's in his way, he's getting ready to just jump on it. Anything that's holding you down, anything that's keeping that business from functioning, anything that's keeping your, your family, anything that's keeping your body from functioning, the glory of God is about to deal with it. And we're going to see him in a way that's just going to be amazing. You begin to understand a bit about the culture that's around him. Now, listen, when we get together and when we gather together now, uh, what we're about to learn is going to influence how we communicate. Uh, it's going to influence what you tolerate and what you have ignored. And you're going to get to the place where what he wants is going to be foremost. And it's going to change the way we do business. It's going to change the way we operate in our church service. I very well expect God's presence to fill our lives and our experience with him far beyond where we are even now. And, and I'm just going to just go on and say that uh, I, I'm throwing in the towel tonight. I'm saying, God, I give up. And whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, it's fine with me. Listen, uh, the only thing that's important and the only thing that's necessary is that not just that God show up, but we would learn how to administrate his presence. Tommy Tenney was with us in one of our uh, gatherings, one of our summits a few years ago. And right around the time that this book came out, The God Chasers, and so we're going to go back and let's study together, uh, and there's a lot of things we'll share. I know that many of you have already purchased the book, and we're going to use a little bit of, of the book, and then we're going to go into the study guide together. Listen, I do want to know where you're listening to us from, and I just want you to make it up in your mind tonight that whatever God you need to do in me, I'm willing to surrender it. Listen, you can't, you can't be on both sides of the fence on this. It's either all God or nothing. It's, it's either you say, Lord, you have your way. You can't say have your way until it causes me to lose my grip. I'm not talking about a bunch of button pushers. I'm talking about people who are divorcing religion tonight, even divorcing what we call church and getting to a place now that we need a new experience with him, not taught by flesh, but inspired yet again by the Holy Spirit. In the introduction, it says there's always been God chasers and there's always been wherever and as long as there's been God, there's always been God chasers. History is filled with their stories. Mine, as Tommy is saying, is just another one of those stories. Stories of this type can be read as roadmaps uh, to the Holy of Holies or places of access to the heavenly realms. God chasers transcend time and culture. We need to make that point tonight that God chasers, they transcend time and culture. And I'm just announcing tonight, nothing is going to stop this wave. It, it's, it's amazing to me how the Ukrainian people who are defiant and they're saying, we won't stop. Nothing is going to stop us. We are going to keep moving no matter what you do. That's got to be the type of determination and aggressiveness that God chasers, people who really want God, are really moving in. Now, let me say this because I think it's very necessary that we share this together. And that is, I think the time has come even that we uh, reshape, that we uh, revitalize, that we go back and uh, redo, re-image words that we've used down through time, even as it relates to pursuing God. There are some stories, there are some systems that are, too old and antiquated to facilitate what God wants to do in 2022, 3, 4, and 5. 
And so we're going to have to really investigate. And, and is my communication, is my words, does my words provide God access or does it keep him handicapped and restricted? I have found that times like this, every so many years, that God begins to move and says, I will not be held up in that corral that makes you feel good. He, he's jumping out the corral now. I'm telling you, he's leaping over the fence because it's time for him to reveal a whole nother aspect of who he is. God chasers again, transcend time and culture. They come from every background imaginable. They come from every era of time that has been uh, existed. They come from Abraham wandering as a herdsman to Moses adopted as a stutterer uh, to David, the shepherd boy. As a parade of time continues, the names keep popping up. Uh, as we began to look at, at, at Evan Roberts and William Seymour of Azusa Street, that I mentioned a few moments ago, really only history can tell us the names of the true God chasers. I, I, I think you need to begin to type that in now. Declare tonight, I am a God chaser. I need to see how many of you in different countries. Again, I'm monitoring this screen. I need to see you. I see you from Tucson, that I am a God chaser. I see you there in Harrisburg. And I want to know where you're listening to us from. God chasers have a lot in common. Primarily, they're not interested in camping out on some dusty truth known to everyone. They're after the fresh presence of the Almighty. Sometimes their pursuit raises eyebrows to existing churches, but usually they lead the church from a place of dryness. Man, we need God to show up now. Back in, not just God to show up, God needs us to show up. Back into a place of his presence. If you are a God chaser, he goes on to say, you won't be happy to just simply follow God's track. Wow. I want to read that again. If you are truly chasing after God, you will not be happy just following God's tracks. You will follow him until you apprehend his presence. The difference between the truth of God and the revelation is very simple. Truth is where God has been. Revelation is where God is now. I, I'm a God chaser. I need you to declare it. I need you to say, I'm not, I don't want to be where God has been. I know it's awesome to be in his presence, but there is another stage, and that is his presence comes to reveal what his presence is revealing, and he's revealing another aspect of him. Where is God now? It's not enough to be where he's been. You see, we, we need more than just momentum. I believe that we just need to say, Father, uh, thank you for the momentum that got our attention. But we are willing now, as you said in the book of Genesis, to leave everything that you knew, leave everything that you thought. And I need you, as the God said in his word, to follow me. Get out of everything, every system, disconnect from it so that you will learn me in a whole new way. Now, listen, uh, there are people who won't want to follow this is because they've gotten comfortable. There are some people who have already decided I'll, I can go to heaven from here. And you probably could. But there's more to God to know. There's more to God to learn. There's more to God to discover. I need you to hear that no matter whether you're in the islands, no matter whether you're in, uh, in, in Latvia, no matter whether you're in Germany, there's more to God to discover. And I just believe this. Now, I'm speaking prophetically now, but I just believe that we're about to see the results of angelic activity as a result of what's going on in this war or this proposed war. I'm telling you, angels respond to the hunger to see God move like we've never seen him move. And angels respond to thirst. I want to see a region filled as a result of our pursuit, our thirst of him. 
It's his trail, its path. But it leads to what? It leads to him. Perhaps the masses of people are happy to know where God has been. But true God chasers, true God chasers are not content just to study God's trail. They want to know him. I need to know how many of you tonight want to know him. I'm, I'm telling you, we've been in church all of our life, but many people, they, they know the Bible story, but they've never encountered God personally. They've never allowed the Holy Spirit to speak to them because we thought we've taught it as if that, that the Holy Spirit is some mythical creature that doesn't have personality, doesn't have uh, traits that can be tracked and followed. But I'm going to here to tell you the Holy Spirit, he is a person. He is not an it. He is a person. He can feel. He is, he is truth. He's our guide. I, I, I like to say it this way, that, that the Holy Spirit is so awesome because he is the choreographer of destiny. And I'm telling you, he is right now placing you, placing me, placing the whole body of Christ where we knew we couldn't get by ourselves. Sadly today, the bulk of the church is like some proverbial detective holding a magnifying glass in its hand and studying where God has been. Of course, a hunter can determine a lot by studying the tracks of an animal. Hear this now. But he can determine which direction it's going, how long it's been, and how long it's been on that particular road, but in, in knowing uh, how far uh, beyond they have moved past that particular moment, or if they have, but how much it weighs, whether it's a male or a female, and so on. But unfortunately, the church today spends countless hours of much energy debating, debating, I hope y'all are hearing this, spends countless hours debating on where God has been, how heavy he was, and he was there, and even his gender and true God chasers, all these things are immaterial. That's why you, you feel an unease. That's why you're feeling like there's more is because the search of where he's been through religion or theology in that sense has come to its end. Now you want a personal encounter with him. They want to run hard and hot on this trail of truth until they arrive at the point of revelation where he presently exists. I don't want to be where God has been. I want to know where he is now. And I believe that we, and this time in of our life, have the, have the awesome opportunity to discover where God is, not where he's been, and not just to discover where he is now, but to participate with what he's doing in this earth. There was a song a few years ago that was written that if you can use anything, God, use me. Another song was written to say that, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Well, I'm here to tell you, God doesn't want to do it without you. He wants you to participate in this level of recreation, rediscovery of who he is. He really wants to use you as an instrument. God wants to use God chasers, and that's why he's placing them in every aspect of society. A God chaser may be excited about some dusty truth and may even be thrilled somewhat over determining of the weight of the cabal, which is the glory that has passed in this path, how long ago it was. But that's the problem, how long ago it was. A true God chaser is not happy with just past truth. He must be present truth. I believe that there is a generation alive that are, we are calling them God chasers, but I don't believe that Acts 28 was the finality. I believe that we're the Acts 29 generation. That's that God generation. That's that God zone. 
that. You know what? We've learned about, we've heard about, we heard stories, we played the videos about the Holy Spirit, but now it's time to see him and what he looks like outside of a church service. It's time for us as God chasers to see how God behaves in the marketplace. Let's see how God behaves uh, with the stock market. Let's see how God behaves with the banking system. He has a different kind of behavior when religious restraints are taken off. I honestly believe, and I had this conversation a few times with a few leaders, what would the kingdom look like if Baptist wasn't on it, if Pentecostal wasn't on it, if some religious thing, Methodist or whatever it is, what would we look like? How far would we be if we didn't have some religious order handicapping it? This is where we are as God chasers. There's a vast difference between present truth and past truth. I'm afraid that most of what the church has studied as he goes on to say, is past truth. And very little of what we know now is really present truth. If you want to recognize a real God chaser, think of a hooping, barking, tail-pounding dog, trembling with excitement. Just give God chasers the scent that God is nearby and watch what happens. Wow. As the Bible says, the scent of the water causes many things to happen, like blood hounds on a trail. They'll get the most, they'll get, uh, most excited, and when they reach their prey, uh, in this instance, the prey is his presence. I want to go a little bit further with you uh, because it, it's something that I, I, I believe that we're about to encounter uh, with him and uh, with this uh, study that we're about to go on, I want to ask you some questions. And you could type it in. Uh, it's going to be our way of engaging tonight. What is the difference between knowing about God and actually knowing God? I mean, we have people preach the Bible. Boy, he preached. But where's the manifestation? You, I don't want to just preach about healing. I want to see people healed. I was fortunate enough to be in A.A. A. 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 Allen's tent revival. I was fortunate enough to be in a Catherine Kuhlman service. I, I, I thank God because I saw it firsthand on how God performs when there's hunger and when there's thirst. You're waiting for God, but really God is waiting on you. So what is the difference between knowing about God and knowing God. What is the difference between serving God and having a relationship with him? You see, church work is good. Serving in the church is good. But that doesn't mean you have a relationship with him. Because you can get real territorial and mean and nasty about that territory or that office that you have. And you're more protective of it. And rather than realizing that that's just something you're doing momentarily, there is something greater to the experience of coming into the place of worship. Your worship can also be where you work. And so going after a title is, is really not what we're supposed to be going after. It's making sure that his essence is pouring through us. Now, I believe that we're about to have an experience, an encounter with him. We are God chasers. You look different. There's a sound. Oh, yes. There is a sound that comes out of, of the body, the mouth, the heart of a God chaser. They, they, they may not harmonize all the time. They may be in a key that may not sound as good as somebody else, but I'm telling you, nothing harmonizes like hunger. Nothing harmonizes like thirst. I know you may know a note, but you're not hungry. You see, and it shows off. See, people who are really hungry for God, everybody knows it. Everybody knows when you're not on. I know some people think that their gift makes them 
to be one who's after God. No, many times that gift is just what you're working through, and, but there's no demonstration. I'm looking for the time that no matter what we're doing, that the presence of God shows up. Now, I'm not talking about just in an emotional way. I'm not talking about no control. I'm not talking about that there, there's no order. But what I'm really saying to you is that our hunger for God should be leading us. Now, if you have a question, type it in quickly because there, I can see it and, and, and I want to see it more. I want you to uh, comment if you want. Uh, one says that personal intimate experience and encounter not relied upon uh, from someone else's account of him. Boy, that's, that's, that's heavy there. Someone else said that uh, a personal relationship makes the difference. A personal relationship. Uh, again, nothing harmonizes like hunger. Oh yeah, you, 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 you may know the writ you may know the litany, but there's no spirit behind it. You're just performing a duty. You're just performing an act. And it's good that you know that. But it's time for us to go beyond just what we've read or what we've been taught. Take what you've been taught. Honor who taught it to you. But that person is really supposed to be leading you to the more of him. To the more of him. And I, I just believe that the father is standing at the door and knocking and saying, who in this house going to let me in? Who going to open up the door and let me be God again? Who's going to let me reveal myself? Someone asks you again, uh, is there a difference between knowing God and knowing about God? Yes. Number two, how did you initially get to know the Lord? How did you get to your present place of knowing him? Those are two different uh, part, parts of the journey. Somebody led you to him. Somebody introduced you to him. Somebody loved you enough to share the plan of salvation. Somebody loved you enough to introduce you to the church you go to. Somebody led you to a connect group because they saw such value in you and God used them as an instrument so that you would get on the journey. Now, here's the problem. Many people get to know the Lord as a personal savior, but that's it. That's as far as they allow him. But I'm telling you, God wants to reveal himself. He wants to open up the gates so that you will know what he knows. You will see what he sees. And you, you have to do this. Now, this is going to be a tough one. You have to ask God in this hour, what are you hungry for in 2022? You see, I believe that praise is asking God, what are you hungry for? Worship is what you do once he gives you the answer. God chasers are affixed on what is God desiring today? What is God wanting in the month of March? You see, there's an emphasis in the month of March. Mo the month of March is just not signs of coming out of winter. God has some strong stuff to say, but he wants to be pursued. God chasers pursue him. God chasers are after him like a bloodhound. Now, I'm going to tell you again, there's some people who might tell you to shut up. There's some people that says you make too much noise. There's some people that says you're just, you're weird. God chasers are weird. God chasers are different, are a different breed. God chasers are not interested in what you think anymore. God chasers are after God with all their might. Now, they can be a little different because uh, hunger, desperation will cause you to do some crazy things. You say, I, I, I'm too reserved to do that. You haven't gotten hungry enough yet. You haven't been thirsty enough. Because thirst will have you doing some things that are out of your personal character. And I believe that's really uh, the result of us uh, trusting in the way we see things, trusting in the way we feel. It's time now to get back to desiring him. The songs, 
that we sing can no longer be songs just because they're popular. They have to be songs that will attract him. God chasers must lift up a sound that attracts the presence of God. And I'm telling you, every time we attract his presence, every time we do what it takes to attract his presence, as God chasers, we have the right to expect God to show up. We have the right to be able to say, God, do it again. You know, uh, you know how some of us, we have children and grandchildren, and uh, you might even remember when you did it when you were a little child, that your parents, your mother or your father or both, uh, they would pick you up and throw you into the air, and you go to giggling and cracking up, and you say, do it again, do it again. That's what God wants us as his children to do. When, when he does it, he needs us, us to look at him with such a thrill and say, do it again. God chasers are saying, if you did it once, you could do it again. That's my desire tonight. God, do it again. I know what I saw, but God, do it again. Can you say that to the Lord? Do it again. Just remember the last thing he did in your life and say, God, do it again. Do it again. And guess what? He just wants to hear that from you. He wants to know, is my last move, did that satisfy you? Or do you want me to do more? I'm realizing that God chasers realize this, that God only did what we were allowing him to do. God chasers are so different. They're a different breed as we move on together here. What does it mean to be hungry for God? Somebody type that in. What does it mean to be hungry for God? What does it mean? What does it mean to be thirsty for God? Is it, is it a religious approach? Is it, is it so that I can get Instagram likes or social media likes? What does it really mean to be hungry for God? What I'm trying to do, I, I want to spend the rest of my life on this planet encouraging you to discover God so that your purpose for being here will be so bright, will be so clear to you, so plain to you. He doesn't want you walking around scratching where you don't itch. He doesn't want you spending 40 days, 40 years in a wilderness somewhere. He wants you to know his will tonight. God chasers won't stop. They'll push their plate away. They'll fast. They'll come to service early just to pray. They'll come in different times of shut-in. They'll, they'll, they'll go to the water just to encounter God. They'll go to a mountain just to encounter God, just to be able to say, Lord, I want more of you. I don't know about you, but I want more of God. Now, I know people who say it, but their behavior after saying it doesn't match. A person who is after God, a person who is desperate for God, a person who's hungry for God has less tolerance for stupidity and toxic gatherings and people. People who are after God, they're, they're, they won't put, uh, participate in backbiting, say one thing in people's face and then do something other to tear them down. They're, they're, they're not after God. They're, they're wrapped up in whatever, but it certainly is not God or his presence. And, and, and I'm telling you, get ready because you are a different breed. You are a different uh, populace of people. God chasers here, God chasers. So what does it mean to be hungry for God? What does it mean? Uh, the covenant relationship makes the difference. It certainly does. What does it mean uh, to be hungry? What encourages you to be hungry for him? I know some people want him, want God after, or they want God in their life uh, because they want something. They, they, they want a bill paid. They, they want to be able to get something new. Now, that's elementary yeah, that's, I'm not knocking you where that is concerned. But he wants you to not seek his hand, but he wants you to seek his face. Don't be satisfied. God chasers are not satisfied with seeking his hand. God chasers have, a, have, a, have an insatiable desire to say, what do you want? I want to feed you what you want. 
Worship, in my definition, is feeding God till he is satisfied. That may mean we, we may get to one song. That's it. And that song that's been designed. That song that has been written. I don't know that some of the songs that we sing are going to be enough to express the heart of a God chaser in this hour. So our songwriters and some of us that are not songwriters are going to have the oil, the energy, the insight to put pen to paper. No licks, no, no rhymes in it, but it, it's the heart of, of you you're representing a whole generation that just says, we want more of you. We want more of you. Can you imagine just singing a song? We want more of you. We want more of you. You heard on the video that even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. I mean, can you imagine the, the father saying, don't, don't, don't stop singing that part right there. Just say that. Even when I don't see you, you're working. You never stop working. You never stop working. God chasers are saying, if you want us to say it for 15 minutes, that's what we're going to say. We're not here to try to uh, get in some emotional state. We want to attract you. Those moments, those encounters with him causes him to do things in your next tomorrow, your next week, your next tomorrow's tomorrow. You are building on a supernatural future that's going to release a presence, that's going to release an oil. Intercessors are being awakened again. Intercessors are coming out from behind the backside of the desert. Intercessors are coming off mute now. Worshippers are coming off mute. Prophets are coming off mute to lead us back into the presence of the Lord. You see, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, things change. I'm telling you, we're about to see encounters where where we are worshiping him and can't get out, can't move. When 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 the supernatural prophetic voice of God starts to speak, we can't get out. And things began to happen. Things began to manifest right before our eyes. This is when we're about to see things in the spirit realm or because of the spirit realm that we haven't seen in our lifetime. I'm telling you, God is about to do some things that are so different. Worship is not till we like the song. Worship is feeding God. Worship is feeding him. You feed his desire until he is satisfied. You feed his desire. How many of us have the boldness to say what's on your menu? Not just this is what we study, God. Take what we study. This is what we've done. You got to just handle this because it's got to be done in, in 10 minutes. Let's get to the place that we allow God the framework and the timing. And I'm here to tell you that it don't take God long to respond. It does not take God all day. I believe that we're about to see some things in a short amount of time because of the hunger and the thirst of believers all over this world. Listen, I want you to ask that question, answer that question. What does it mean to be hungry for God? And then what does it mean to seek God's face? And not his hand. A lot of us want what he could do. But we don't want him. We, 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 we love the fact that uh, we, we saw him perform. But there's no response from us of what he did. Here's where I am. If we could understand the formula of what it means to attract his presence. And God responds. I want to know if I can get you to do this, I want to see how much more you're going to do. I want to see how far you'll go because we've created the cause. The effect comes from you and I creating the cause. God chasers create the cause. God chasers create the atmosphere. God chasers create the platform And we then see God move. So 
It's not I'm praying and hoping. This is not a lottery. This is not Keno. This is not Powerball. It's consistent. It's a law. Feed him and he'll move. Feed him and he'll manifest. Feed him and you'll see God show up in your situation. I'm telling you, we're about to see an army of hungry people. This uh, war, and I'm sorry that I keep uh, referencing it, but the Ukrainian people don't even have the tanks. They, they can't even get their jets in the air, the little bit that they do have. They have, they have people who are saying, we're so desperate. They, they say they have, they've created Molotov cocktails to fight a warfare that just <laughs> with jets and missiles. God chasers said, all I have is this Molotov cocktail, but I'm telling you one thing, our God is going to get in the midst of this and we're going to see God move. You may not have the weaponry that others may have, but you have God on your side. And that hunger that you feel stirring in you, that desperation that you feel stirring in you, that's God engineered. That's God ordained. And I decree and I declare to you that beginning tonight, your life will never be the same. You're not going to come to a church service and be normal anymore. You're not going to stand and hear the word of God and not respond. God chasers are excited about a sound, a new thing. God says in his word that, I, behold, I will do a new thing. See, see, won't I do it? Let's become the reason why God moves. Now, he'll move in Haiti. He'll move in Jamaica. Oh, yes, he will. He'll move, ladies and gentlemen, in Los Angeles. He'll, he'll move in, in New Orleans. No matter where you are, God wants to move. He'll move in Birmingham, Alabama. Yes, he will. He, he, he wants to move in Arizona right now. You are where you are. One man, one woman can change a denomination if that's where God has placed you. One person could change how God is about to show up. One person could change a territory. You caught the fire of God. You become consumed with uh, what the oil of God and what he wants to do. You see, God chasers like the Issachar group, they don't just talk about the change. They become the change. I announced tonight, this is the beginning of where you've never been before. I announce tonight that this is the timing of the Lord for us. We are not going to walk around aimless. We're walking around with great expectation. We're walking around with great anticipation. I expect testimonies to begin to happen tonight. I expect things to shift in your favor because you're a God chaser. I expect those of you that are saying, God, I'm going to give you this certain time every night. I'm going to give you this certain time every morning. I'm going to give you this certain time every day. Find out what he's hungry for. Now listen, don't try to do it the way somebody else does it. Don't even try to do it at the same time somebody else does it. How he's going to use your hunger is going to be different than how he'll use somebody else's thirst. Do not be afraid to follow after him, to follow after his leading, his guiding. He will lead you in the paths of righteousness. He will lead you directly to his heart, not just what he could do. I thank you tonight for listening. I am so excited about this opportunity that we're going to take as we answer these questions together about God chaser. What does it mean to be a God chaser? Experiences are getting ready to happen. Some of you are a bit ready to, to encounter the Holy Spirit, encounter a moment where you thought, I don't know how in the world I got into this. But as I sense the presence of God, even tonight, you're going to sense him in a situation on your job. You're going to sense a situation no matter where you are. On, in the business that you have, those are God moments. God chasers are sensitive to God moments. What are God moments? Times where God engineers you to be in a certain circumstance, engineers, tailor-made, 
a situation that don't even look like him, don't even reveal. In the natural, I don't even know why I'm here. In the natural, I think I blew it. But then all of a sudden, the God moment begins to take form and you begin to sense it. Don't ever forget. Don't ever lose sight of what that felt like and what that looks like because it's going to be repetitive in your life. God doesn't want to just give you one moment. Those God moments when it looked like everything was lost, then God shows up. That God moment when the doctor said there's nothing we could do for your loved one, then God shows up. That God moment, ladies and gentlemen, when you didn't even know you had the equipment in you for that next promotion, a God moment. I decree and declare God moments over these next 24 to 48 hours in your life. God moments. You need to begin to claim it. I'm walking in my God moment. I am open to my God moment. That thing, I know I couldn't do it. There's, this is beyond where I am. But I thank God he's leading me and he's going to reveal to you what you never thought he would ever do. He loves you enough to get that done. As I said, there's going to be people on stage with us on next week. We're going to have a uh, Zoom going at the same time as many of you are listening online tonight or on YouTube. Please let us know where, you, where you're listening to us from and, and how you're listening to us because we're doing much this week to ensure that we get the word of the Lord out in a way that is efficient and that is excellent and it's pointed. I believe there's a whole generation that's going to come to know God not by that old religion, but by this new, fresh move of the Holy Spirit. He's getting ready to breathe on you again. Not just young people, but people who have been in it. Oh, we need a fresh move. We need a new baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then we need to frame how we do business so that we'll begin to understand how he's moving now. Not what he did 50 years ago, but what he's doing now. I decree tonight, you're a God chaser, and it's going to change every element of your life. I'm telling you, you're going to begin to sense that, that oh, I just don't even have the taste for that anymore. I don't even have the interest in that kind of conversation. I don't even want to be around that group of people who, who just seem like they're just going nowhere. I mean, you pour all of your time, they rob your ideas, and nothing. It's time for you to get around some people in the populace called God chasers. Get in that zip code. Your life will change forever because hunger is stirring. Uh, thirst is stirring. And when you merge those two together, you'll find that you're not the only one on that plane, on that planet that wants to be where you are. You're going to find out somebody's just as hungry as you are. It changed my life when I found out that the hunger that I have is also in the hunger of thousands and thousands of other people. Those are the people I'm connected to. Let's do it together. Let's find them all over this world. Listen, every Wednesday night, we're going to be teaching until the Lord says enough. We're going to be teaching about being a God chaser. We're going to find out what it is that disturbs God. Now, in my prophetic class, uh, we taught for about a month and a half on the Holy Spirit. We're going to put it down in bite-sized pieces and going to put it on our uh, media profiles so that you will be able to listen that will lead you into this conversation. We found out that the Holy Spirit is infinite. He has infinite intelligence. There isn't anything he doesn't know. We found out the Holy Spirit knows the playbook of the enemy. We found out that the Holy Spirit is, is distinct. He's, he's, he's an intellectual. His speech, his speech, the tongue of the Lord is profound. We found out that the Holy Spirit uh, is not an it. He's a person. The Holy Spirit is, I think, the greatest superpower on the planet 
that we know and beyond because he is third person of the Trinity. I want to say this to you. The Trinity is made up of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They have agreed. They have come together in a synergy. How can you uh, not see his power when you see El Elyon, the presence and the power of our God, merge with Jesus, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit? They all talk the same. They all complemented each other. The Holy Spirit wants to move in your life where he will complement the seed that he's put inside of you and nothing shall befall you. You're getting ready to see it. You're getting ready to see him. You're getting ready to see his actions. And I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. So we're going to be putting uh, and chopping some of the uh, sessions down so that you'll be able to share it and look at it on your way to work and listen to it that will empower your day. We tried to use words and phrases that will uh, be amenable to touching people who don't go to church. I will not allow the Holy Spirit to just remain within a religion. We want to make him accessible to people of every walk of life. Because he has a plan for you. He's the choreographer of your destiny. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. I want you to study. Some of you have already purchased the book. And we're gonna, it's going to be interactive with you. Uh, some of you have purchased the study plan. Get it. Some of you have even gone beyond. Uh, and because he wrote a book that talked about what do you do after you catch God. Uh, well, there's a behavior. We need to realize God is monitoring how we respond once we get to know him. He's a God that can do anything. I appreciate you for being with us tonight. And I thank God for you being one who said, I'm going to be different. I'm going to be the one that's not ashamed to usher in a move of God in my city, in my nation. I want to be one. They may laugh at me, but you know what? They laughed at me when I wasn't doing anything. So they sure enough going to have something to laugh about now. But you need to hear me. The people that laugh are going to be the ones who are going to eat off of your discovery. I want to say that again. They may laugh and call you stupid. They may say you just, you just lost it. You're just one of, you, you done got deep. Oh, you done got deep now. No, I just found myself. That's what has happened. I have finally found myself. The search is over for finding me. Now the search is me finding God. And the only way that I'll be able to know me is knowing him. Thank you for listening tonight. Those of you that said I want to have a personal walk with him, here's what you do. Father, I receive you into my life. Father, I'm sorry. I apologize for going my way. I'm a, I apologize for getting lost in religion, for getting angry and disappointed. I want to invite you into my life. I make full confession that, Father, I'm sorry I've gone against you, but tonight I want to be a God chaser. I'm, I don't want to do church as per usual, but I want to be a God chaser. In Jesus' name, I'm telling you, life is about to change for you. Our service is going to begin this Sunday morning. This is the first Sunday. Uh, we serve communion on our first Sundays. And I would love to be able to serve you in communion and with communion that you will see the, the koinonia, the fellowship of God chasers together. I would love to have you to come. And so God's blessings upon you. Now, those of you that are listening, in a few moments you're going to see on the screen an opportunity for you to be able to engage with us, to be able to plant into, to be able to help forward this kind of teaching uh, and, and connectivity to people all around the globe. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is, has engineered our communication tonight. So listen, on the screen is an opportunity for you to safely give digitally tonight. 
I appreciate you so very much for how you have stood behind us, for how you have uh, made this church the place you come to for truth, the place that you come to to learn how to peacefully worship him. It's a safe place. No church is perfect, but I'm telling you, we're a group of God chasers that are after him. And I'm telling you, it may be a few stragglers that want to stay behind, but they won't work. We're after God. There's a mighty force that's arising. And I'm glad that you have chosen to be a part of this fellowship. Listen, I'd love to hear from you through your giving. You could tithe tonight out of your business. You could give out of your expectation. What are you believing God for? Well, put a seed behind it. This is what I'm believing God for. Our services begin at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, the weather is changing, so we are going to be looking forward to and adding to. But listen, I also want to say this to you, that next Wednesday, I'm going to be adding a 12 noon session, a 12 noon session next Wednesday. So it'll be noon and 730. Now, the reason being is that we touch people in different time zones. And I don't want them to have to be up in the middle of the morning when we could touch them in the evening time. So we'll be talking about this very subject, God chasers, at 12 noon next Wednesday and then back again, 730 next Wednesday night. I'm telling you, it's going to be a blessing. I appreciate you tonight. I'm praying for you. I, I believe God with you. I believe that this is a time that you're about to see life totally different. May the Lord keep you. May he keep you with his love, surround you with all that he has to let you know he has got your back. Thank you for being a part of this time tonight. And until we meet again, let's keep chasing God together. Hey guys, looking to stay connected with us or rewatch your favorite sermon? Head over to youtube.com, type in City of Hope IWC. There you'll be able to watch all of our latest content as it's made available. Say the moment God shows me, I'm stepping. And don't forget to hit subscribe. See you over on YouTube.